And at 3.38, we want to take you to the Prince George's Police Department in Palmer Park and a news conference being held about that suspicious uh, pol the crash that happened earlier in which a bystander was killed. Let's listen. He subsequently observed the driver did not place the vehicle in park, but stood at the side of the road with his foot on the brake. This, in conjunction with the fact that the vehicle was traveling without headlights, led him to check the tag and registration. The tag of the vehicle came back as unregistered. At this point, the officer thought that there may be more afoot than a simple traffic stop and requested backup. Two minutes later, additional officers arrived to provide that officer with that backup. At this point, the officer who made the traffic stop approached the vehicle and engaged the driver. The officer asked the driver for identification. The driver said he had none. At this point, the officer directed the driver to place the vehicle in park, and in-car camera footage captures the driver jerking the steering wheel hard to the left and accelerating away. As the driver accelerates away, he strikes our officer on the officer's right-hand side. The officer does sustain injuries to his shoulder and leg in this collision. Immediately afterwards, the officers who had arrived to provide backup initiated brief pursuit, which lasts for less than half a mile, to the intersection of Branch Avenue and Curtis Drive. The driver of the SUV proceeds through that intersection at speed. Our officers come almost to a complete stop at that intersection and allow it to clear before proceeding through. At this point, as they have just passed the intersection of Branch Avenue with Curtis Drive, they observe approximately a quarter mile further down the road, the SUV strike another vehicle, then strike the median, then travel into opposing traffic where it strikes additional vehicles. Our officers then proceed to the accident scene and arrive there approximately 10 seconds afterwards. Upon their arrival, they observe that the driver of the SUV has exited the vehicle and fled on foot, traveling approximately 200 yards to the Nail Road Metro Station, where he then scales a fence, continuing his course of flight. Additional officers arrive in the area, establish a perimeter, and this individual identifies Mr. Henson, is apprehended approximately 30 minutes later. Mr. Henson was then transported to the Criminal Investigations Division, where he was interrogated and admitted to his involvement in these events. On behalf of the Prince George's County Police Department and Chief Bagal, we wish to express our condolences to the family who lost the individual killed by Mr. Henson's reckless behavior. What's more, Mr. Henson, it turns out, is on probation for armed carjacking, and as related to these events, he has been charged again with theft and first-degree assault on our police officer. Additional charges may be placed upon further review by the state's attorney's office. Again, we deeply regret the loss of life. But again, Mr. Henson, through his flagrant disregard for the safety of the public, has led us to a place where we've lost a life, and that is never our goal. With that, I'll take any questions. Again, the victim in this was traveling in the opposite direction on the other side of the roadway when Mr. Henson collided with the vehicle, then struck the median and traveled into opposing traffic. The collision of the vehicle, which was driven by Mr. Henson and subsequently found to have been stolen in February, was what killed the individual, a 61-year-old male. I can't give you an exact number. We're still weeding through the data. We have in-car camera footage, which lays out for you the fact pattern that I've offered. Um, but the speeds were excessive. And certainly, Mr. Henson was um, deliberately indifferent to the safety of the public in his actions. Two questions. Um, did, he was on probation for carjacking of a previous car, not the one that he had stolen. Correct. Okay. The officer approaches the vehicle. He's on foot next to the stolen car that Mr. Henson is occupying. When he orders Mr. Henson to place the vehicle in park, 
Mr. Henson turns that wheel hard to the left and accelerates away at a high rate of speed. At that point, as he's moving away, the officer cannot get out of the way of the vehicle, but the in-car camera footage captures him attempting to. He's not quick enough, and he gets struck by the vehicle and, again, sustains injuries to his shoulder and his leg. Well, I'll say this. In the context of this particular event, the entirety of this event plays out across less than, well, I'll just say it, six-tenths of a mile from the initial traffic spot to the collision. The initial pursuit only proceeds to the point where those officers get to Curtis Drive, and then because of traffic and because of our policies, which mandate them to come to a full stop or at least slow extremely before entering an intersection, that driver now has stretched out to a quarter mile, away, quarter mile away from us, and at that point, an active pursuit is not occurring. Beyond that, I will say this. As with every critical incident, this set of circumstances will be reviewed by our executive review panel. There will be recommendations made to Chief McGall based on potential changes to policy and potential changes to our practices, again, based on a review of this with who joins us today, the Inspector General, Mr. Acosta. At this point, if it looks like under your rules, they were justified in, in making the initial pursuit? Based on the circumstances, these officers were acting appropriate based on the fact that the individual had committed a first-degree assault against one of our officers. Yes. This is why police insist there is no such thing as a routine traffic stop. After stopping a known stolen car, Prince George's police officer was hit by that car as it sped away and injured. The uh, driver of that car, 22-year-old Washingtonian Larry Hinson, sped away with other Prince George's County police in pursuit. That pursuit didn't last very long. Hinson apparently lost control of his vehicle, hit one car in the same direction, plowed into the median, and then crossed over into the oncoming lane of traffic where his car collided with that of another uh, driven by a 61-year-old man, and it was that 61-year-old man who was killed uh, in this thing. Just a horrible set of circumstances.